FYI. Heat waves hit the world. How worried should we be? And later on in the programme, I'm going to be chatting with Tim Peake about all things space. Hi, this is FYI, the weekly news show where we bring you all the latest info on all the top stories. Yep, and we're going to start by looking at the record-breaking temperatures hitting countries all around the world, making it really difficult and dangerous for lots of people. You might have heard that the Cerberus heat wave has been sweeping across parts of southern Europe and northwest Africa, creating extreme weather conditions. In Italy, temperatures reached the high 40s and a red alert warning, which means there's danger to life, was issued for some cities. Many other countries in the northern hemisphere have also experienced extreme heat, including parts of Asia and North America. California's Death Valley, one of the hottest places in the world, reached over 50 degrees recently. So what's causing these temperatures? Well, Dr Adam Levy is a scientist and climate expert. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So what is the Cerberus heat wave and why are temperatures soaring across the world? Well, it's a mixture of different things. Some of them are natural, some of them are connected to us. So on the natural side, we've got something called El Nino. What that means is that bits of the ocean are hotter than usual, and that's making parts of the world hotter than usual. But thrown into that mix is climate change that we humans are causing. We're heating up the planet by burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, and by cutting down trees. And by heating the planet, we're really throwing fuel on the fire of heat waves like this. What we're seeing is that heat waves now, they last longer than they used to, they're more intense than they used to be, and on top of all that, we're just seeing more of them. So how are these conditions affecting children and families, and what can they do to stay safe? So they can really put children and their families at quite a lot of risk from things like heat stress, heat stroke, heat exhaustion, this kind of thing, where, where your body can't keep enough fluids and in some cases can't keep its temperature at the right temperature. So to keep cool, we can stay out the sun, wear thinner clothes, make sure we drink lots of water. So should we be worried longer term about these kind of heat waves? Yes, so heat waves like these are predicted to keep getting worse the more we heat the planet. And we know what's causing us to heat the planet. It's burning those fossil fuels. We can shift away from these ways of making our energy and getting around to things like solar panels and wind turbines and nuclear energy. The quicker we do that, the quicker we'll stop heat waves like these getting worse. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Adam. Thank you. So, we know that extreme temperatures are going to be more common because of global warming, but there are lots of different types of weather that can affect us depending on where we live. Yep. Now, Thomas, I don't know about you, but my parents always check the weather forecast before making plans. But how do we know what the weather's going to be like from one day to the next? Well, if you just don't get it, don't worry, because I've been investigating. I bet when you wake up in the morning, you look outside the window and you notice the weather. If it's sunny, you might need a pair of shades for a fun day at the beach. But if it's raining, you're probably going to need a coat and a brolly. The weather forecast can help us to decide what to wear and what to do with our day. I mean, who wants to have a picnic in the middle of a thunderstorm, right? That would just be silly and dangerous. So how do we know whether it's going to be hot or cold? Well, in the days before high-tech weather forecasts, people had some pretty weird ways of predicting the weather. Check out some of these. An open pine cone suggests dry weather, perfect for the wind to take their seeds. But a closed pine cone is a warning that rain is on the way. And you may have heard the saying, Red sky at night, shepherd's delight, to predict a sunny day tomorrow. Well, we now know this one does have a bit of truth to it. And if cows are lying down in their field, well, some people think that means there's rain on the way. Or maybe they just want to rest. 
But what about weather forecasts we see on TV these days? How do they know all this info about what the weather has in store for us? Well, joining me from the Met Office in Exeter is forecaster Aidan McGiven. Hi, Aidan. Hi, Jariah. So, I'm guessing there's more to it than watching cows lying down in the field to see if rain's on the way. If only it was as simple as that. Back in the olden days, people used to look at the skies, they used to study seaweed. These days, we look at computers. But to figure out the forecast, first we need to know what the weather's doing right now everywhere around the world. And we've got all these weather measuring instruments in the sea, on the land, in the sky, up in space, and they send back billions of readings every day which we feed into our supercomputer to give us an idea about the future weather. So you're very reliant on computers, but how do they know when the weather's going to change? There is loads of maths involved. We need to use equations to figure out where the air is moving and how it's changing with time. And our supercomputer, it weighs as much as 11 double-decker buses and it's as powerful as 100,000 PlayStations. So it can work out 14,000 trillion calculations every second. And using those equations, it can give us a forecast. Our forecasts are improving all the time, but we still need skilled meteorologists to check if that weather data is correct and if it's going to plan. So how important do you think the weather forecast really is? The forecast is so important because the weather affects all of us in virtually every aspect of our lives. Sailors need forecasts to figure out which way the wind is blowing, whether there'll be big waves. Pilots need forecasts to see how bumpy their flight will be. And supermarkets need forecasts. They get forecasts of cat food to figure out how much cat food to stock on their shelves because even that can be affected by the weather. So I know the next day forecast is pretty accurate, but how far into the future can you go and still be confident that the weather is going to turn out the way you expect? We can normally tell you what the weather will likely be like a week or so ahead in your location. But beyond that, we have to talk in terms of probability. That means there's a chance of this, or one thing is more likely than another thing. So, for example, if your birthday is in three months' time, we can't tell you exactly what the weather's going to be like on your birthday, but we can tell you that in that month, we're more likely to have wetter weather than drier weather, or it's more likely to be warm than cold. Thank you so, so much for talking to us, Aidan. My pleasure. So it turns out predicting the weather can be a complicated business. But with clever computers and precise data analysis, we have a pretty good idea of what the weather has in store for us. Most of the time. Do you remember Sammy, the surfboarding seal? Hitching a ride on surfboards in California? When it looks like he's had some competition on the waves from a sneaky sea otter who's been stealing surfers' boards. Named simply Otter 841, she has been approaching surfers at sea in California, stealing and even damaging their equipment. She's even been catching waves on one of her stolen boards, Gnarly. Now, if you haven't been living under a rock, You've probably seen that the much-anticipated new Barbie film has just been released and fans are going wild. But its release came at the same time as thousands of actors stopped working in the biggest strike in Hollywood in nearly 60 years. The Screen Actors Guild, or SAG, wants streaming companies like Netflix and Disney Plus to pay them better for the work they do to provide better working conditions and to guarantee that artificial intelligence won't replace human actors in the future. At the film's premiere, Barbie actors Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling and writer-director Greta Gerwig said they would also support their actors' union and were ready to strike. So some of your favourite TV shows and some new movies may be delayed in the coming months. Check this out and see if you think it's fake news or fact. Burger King in Thailand has apparently released a new meatless burger, which is just 20 slices of melted cheese between two buns. They're calling it the real cheeseburger. So, what do you think? Fake or fact? Well, it's a fact. The limited edition item even has an option to add more cheese, if you're not satisfied with the 20 slices already in there. 
I might be giving this one a miss. India has successfully launched their unmanned Chandrayaan-3 moon mission, which is currently cruising through space. It's aimed to land on the south pole of the moon towards the end of August. It would make India the fourth nation to successfully land a craft on the moon, after the USA, Russia and China. And one person who knows all about this space race is astronaut Tim Peake. Braden went to meet him to find out more. Tim Peake is not only the first British astronaut to walk in space, he's also a best-selling author who I first met three years ago. How did you feel when you were like, that's where I'm, I live down there and I can now see it? That, that view that you're looking down there, I mean, when you see the first view of planet Earth, it's mesmerising. I caught up with him to chat about his new book, The Cosmic Diary of Our Incredible Universe, and learn more about what we have to look forward to in the world of space travel. Now, what are some basic facts or some basic knowledge that you think all young people should have about space? I think it's really important that we kind of understand our place in the universe because I thought it's very easy to feel small and insignificant, but we're not small and insignificant, you know. Uh, we are absolutely incredible. Everything that makes us up has come from supernova, from neutron stars, uh, blasted out into the universe. Uh, and we can think, we can ask questions, uh, we're conscious, uh, we are the consciousness of the universe. And I think it's really important that we take a few moments just to reflect who we are and how we've got here. So lots of very famous and rich people, such as Richard Branson and Elon Musk, they've been investing in space travel a lot recently. Mm. But do you think that's the way to go forward, or do you think more government should be investing in getting involved as well? And what's really interesting right now is um, you've got the uh, commercial companies working alongside the government when we're both investing uh, and they're doing different things. So, for example, SpaceX is uh, part of the Artemis program, which is our returning to the moon program. And it's fair to say we cannot return to the moon without SpaceX. They're building the first lander that's going to take the astronauts from the Orion spacecraft. Uh, they're going to rendezvous in lunar orbit and the SpaceX capsule will actually take them down to the surface of the moon. Moon. So that company is working hand in hand with the government space agencies like the European Space Agency and NASA uh, to make that mission possible. Should we be flying into space, especially taking into consideration at the moment the cost of living crisis and climate change? I think it's very, very important that we do travel into space for a number of reasons. And firstly, you know, satellites and space is giving us uh, more than half of the data we need to understand our climate. So on the one hand, we think about you know, climate change and, and should we tra travel into space, but without space, we don't know what's happening to the planet. And we're also developing new technologies in space that are going to help the planet to recover in terms of renewable energy sources, for example. With Mars, you know, are we going? So who better to ask than yourself? Right. What's the verdict? We are going, <laughs> yes. Uh, when will we get there, I think, is the question. Um, and it is a when, it's not an if. We want to go to the moon and stay for a long time, and that's to learn and understand how we can do the Mars missions. I think we're about 10 to 15 years away from doing the Mars missions. It's not long, is it? Which is not long. So what advice would you give to young people who want to become an astronaut? So if you do study science and technology at school, those kind of subjects will really set you up well, or, or coding, for example, engineering, these are all great skills to have. Uh, but the other advice is also to, to really uh, be passionate about what you do and to follow your dreams because that's the most important thing is to enjoy what you do. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. It's been Thanks, wonderful Braden. for your time. It's been great to talk to you. So, Thomas, did you catch any of Wimbledon? Yeah, I did, and it was really impressive, especially the wheelchair tennis. Well, you might have seen that eight-year-old Muavis Anwar, who's raised nearly £10,000 for a charity called Water Aid, tossed in the coin for the Wimbledon's men final. And he even got to meet Prince George and Princess Charlotte. And of course, 20-year-old world number one, Carlos Alcaraz, went on to win the men's final for the first time, beating Novak Djokovic. And another champion was 17-year-old British tennis player, Henry Searle, who won the junior title. He's the first Brit in over 60 years to do it. Nice one. And that's just about it for this week. But we want to leave you with some incredible images of a huge new dome-shaped concert venue in Las Vegas, which has been billed as the world's largest video screen. The Sphere's Alta LED screen is around 50,000 square metres. That's the area of seven football pitches. 
and it's been illuminating the sky with videos, including a 100-metre eyeball. Mind-boggling. See you next time. Bye. Bye.